talk about a couple of the people who we've lost from coronavirus, a couple of our residents. One was a sergeant in the Sands Point Police Department. He was a 19-year veteran of the department, 52 years old. His name was Joseph Spinoza, and he lived in Hicksville. And policing was really in Joseph's blood. His dad was Sir, had served in the NYPD, and uh, we just want to say to the Sands Point community, I spoke with Mayor Adler earlier this morning, that we're sorry for your loss, and to the Spinoza family, we're very sorry for your loss. We also lost another one of our Nassau County family members last night. Nicholas Matei was 66 years old and had worked for the county since 1973 for 46 years. So since he was 20 years old, he worked for the county. He worked in DPW and his title was equipment operator. He drove the snow plow, he, was, did, he did road maintenance, whatever he was asked to do, he did it. Um, he loved his job, he ate, drank, and slept the job, which is why he never retired. And his supervisor said, the guy was a warrior. He was the one you could count on to get the job done. So, and Nicholas, we're, we're really mourning your loss. I know your wife Janet is too. He lived in Farmingdale with his wife Janet. This is a really, really tough loss for us. He was a, you know, really, really great guy. Corrections officers, as of this morning, 43 are currently positive for a total of 119 since the pandemic began. Two of the support staff at the jail are currently positive. Uh, two of our corrections officers are in the hospital. Uh, we have 10 corrections officers currently pending the results of their tests, and a total of 77 corrections officers cleared and back to work. Inmates currently, we have 23 positive, three pending the results of the test, and a total of 27 cleared. Hospitalizations, now we're getting more news with these hospitalizations. So you know how I've been talking about the spread between the new arrivals and those who are leaving the hospital, who are walking out of the hospital? Uh, we've had the biggest spread yet last night. So a total of COVID patients as of last night, 2,419 in our 11 hospitals. That's a decrease of 58 from the day before. Discharges, 235 yesterday. That is a very large spread, and we're very happy to hear that. On ventilators, 505 patients, COVID patients currently on ventilators. That's an increase of two from the day before. So we stayed home. We did the right thing. We flattened the curve, and that's thanks to everyone in Nassau County who played their part, and we're grateful for you. The numbers aren't as bad as were predicted just three weeks ago. And if, if you're like me, you're thinking, great. Now we can get back to normal, right? Whatever that new normal is going to look like, now we can start. Uh, we're long itching to get back to normal. My heart breaks when I hear about bar owners and restaurant owners who are thinking about having to close their businesses. And I know the blood, sweat, and tears that they put into building their businesses. I know that they employ people who rely on that paycheck. And to hear that the longer this goes on, the more they're going to have to, you know, they're going to have to close up, it truly breaks my heart. So, how do we do this? How do we get out of this? The economic devastation is very real. We just saw the numbers in today's paper that U.S. retail sales plunged 8.7% in March. And remember, in March, we weren't in full lockdown for, most of, for a lot of that month. I shudder to think about what the April numbers are going to look like. So we're listening to the federal government, we're listening to the president about what, are, what the federal guidance may be. And we're following Governor Andrew Cuomo and his coalition that he's put together of the regional governors around New York. And I know that they're hard at work coming up with the plan of how we do this. It will take a lot of work to come back. And I'm very happy that they've started the hard work of how we come back. Just a couple of points I want to cover about coming back. Antibody test is crucial for coming back to work. Now, you're following this, I'm sure, like everyone. This is evolving very quickly, these antibody tests. I'm feeling the anxiety about the approval of a finger prick test. Uh, I understand that it's being tested for validation right now as we speak up at Wadsworth. That is the state lab, the state government lab. And it's also awaiting emergent use approval, EUA, from the federal government. And we're learning, I'm learning that both of these are progressing quickly. I've been on the phone finding out about this. Both are progressing very quickly. And we're very eager and anxious to get those approvals and validations done. I'm hearing a lot about different, about a lot of different kinds of antibody tests. There's the finger prick, 
There's the saliva test that's being looked at. Hospitals are moving towards the blood draw test where they can get more blood and get more of a sense of the whole picture of the antibodies. I never thought when I took this job that I would be an expert in antibody tests, but I could tell you about the difference between IgG and IgM tests, and you know, if you have questions about that, I'm happy to answer them. We can save that for another time. But antibody tests are crucial. I know that uh, you know a lot of our business owners, they're very smart, they're very innovative, they're just as anxious to get these. I was speaking with one yesterday who is looking to purchase, when they're validated and approved, looking to purchase some for his company. He employs about 700 people. And then he's talking to other business owners. They're discussing doing point of care tests right in the office, right at the building, where maybe a health professional can come and test people to see if they have antibodies, what kind of antibodies they have. Now, this is incredibly important because it will help us get a sense of the herd immunity out there, right? So there's two kinds of tests. There's the kind for the virus itself, whether you're positive or negative, and then there's the antibodies to know it, what kind of immunity you might have. So a lot of people don't qualify. They don't meet the qualifications for the virus test. There's just not the bandwidth to get everyone tested in the state, which of course we would love to do. But when these antibody tests become available, we'll get a sense of people who never got the virus test, who were, had very mild symptoms, had no symptoms at all, but perhaps they had exposure. We're hearing a lot about people being asymptomatic, but perhaps they're, they're immune and can go back to work. It'll also help business owners and other people who employ people know what kind of PPE they need to give, what kind of masks and gloves they need to give their employees, what kind of accommodations they need to make in the office. And it will also help them allow their employees who are vulnerable, maybe they're on in years, maybe they have diabetes, they have un underlying health conditions, and they can continue telecommuting. Masks are also a part of our new normal. Um, I predicted a few weeks ago that I think masks are going to come back with uniforms and blazers as just part of what people wear to work. Uh, Governor Cuomo has given us two executive orders for the state having to do with masks. The first, of course, is that employers have to give masks to people who deal to their employees who deal with the public, who interact with the public, who are within six feet of the public. The latest one is for the general public. So according to the state executive order, if you're out in public and you cannot stay, do social distancing, you have to have a mask. So that is another way that we can start to come back to work in a safe way. And that's what I've been saying. We've got to come back to work in a safe and methodical way. These tests and masks can be part of that coming back. Uh, I want to I want to give a special shout out to some of our heroes. I want to give a special shout out to our transit workers, the folks who drive the bus, the people who operate the trains, Anthony Simon and his whole crew of amazing workers on the Long Island Railroad. Thank you for what you're doing. You are on the front lines and I salute you. Thank you. Jennifer Frank, she's a seamstress from East Rockaway who's churning out with her sewing machine 50 masks a day and getting them out to our local hospitals. So Jennifer, thank you for what you're doing. Keep it coming. We need you. I also want to thank the Detectives Union President John Wighouse for buying hand sanitizer for his members, doing what he needs to do to help keep them safe. So John and all of our amazing detectives, thank you for what you're doing. Uh, you're still out there, you're still doing the uh, investigations and arresting the bad guys and we're grateful for you. Thank you. Any uh, questions that you might have?